Um, all right, so our next guest is a comedian, Long Island, New York comedian. She's hilarious, and uh, she's joining us right now. This is Carla Okerson. Carla, how you doing? Hi, Don. How are you? Doing good, doing good. I tell you, we were a little worried about you for a little bit. Uh, we saw uh, you, you did go kind of public about it, talking about it on social media, so I'm not like spilling the beans or anything when I say that, that you kind of uh, went through uh, uh, flu-like symptoms. Were you ever um, tested for coronavirus or what, what was the story? I was. I was tested about, I was tested on Monday. Um, it was a huge wait. So I, I initially got sick, I want to say about March 17th, March 18th. I called to get tested on like the 19th because at that point I already had a fever. I had the cough. I had the body aches. I still have a cough. If I cough, I don't want anybody to be alarmed. I have not had any issues with shortness of breath. Um, I did have a little tightness in my chest at one point, but I've never, it's just still lingering. But um, so it took them a week to call me back to get tested. Wow. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I cut out. Hang on. Sorry. Um, and then, so they, I called on Thursday, they called me back on Thursday and then I didn't get a, uh, um, an appointment to go to the Jones beach testing site until the following Monday. So four wow. days ago, um, wow. you know, at that point I felt that I was getting better. Um, a lot of people around me didn't <laughs> probably because of the way my cough sounded. Right. Right. But for me, once I didn't have a fever anymore, I was like, I think I'm getting better. Like this is, this is you know, this is going to be okay. And unfortunately I did kill off my entire podcast. I got, I got Keegan <laughs> out and he, uh, he actually had a rougher time than I did. He did develop pneumonia. Oh, wow. And then, uh, Keegan took out Tim <laughs> <laughs> uh, when they were uh, at your, sh uh, not at your show, excuse me, when they did, uh, when they recorded at governors. At governors. Yeah. Wow. So I took out my whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I killed it. Now I killed everyone. I killed wow. my entire podcast. I also got my daughter sick, which was not pleasant. Right. You know, there was a lot of parental guilt there. Um, mercifully, I have to say, um, early, very early on, like early into February, middle of February, I should say, I have a cousin who works for the CDC. And she was kind of sending us family updates. And she said, the best thing that you can do, me, uh, as a healthy individual, is really booster your immune system just try to put it up as possible so we started pretty early on taking zinc supplements vitamin c um i think i showed this on my podcast before but i got one too i picked these up all right like, yeah like a million of these. like I, I you know i'm not i can't tell you you know that that's gonna fix everyone but for me it's just something that we've been doing in my house and we got sick and it certainly was it took a while for us to feel better but we didn't end up, knock on wood, we didn't end up in the hospital, we didn't end up on a ventilator. You know, we didn't have a high fever. I don't think anybody in our house had a fever higher than 102. But, you know, it was a long, it was a long and lingering illness, I would say. You know, I have a healthy 16-year-old. You know, I'm healthy as well. And we were down for a good 10 days. Wow. We were, we were not okay for 10 days. Like, we definitely were, if, if you know, or, well, work was already shut down for me and my daughter was already at she certainly could have gone couldn't have gone to school and I there was no way I would be able to get through a day of work wow. but uh now you know we're on the men we're still you know we're still quarantined I don't have an official result I still can't smell anything and I still can't taste anything which is hilarious <laughs> that you know that it, it's it's unnerving it's strange but it's at the end of the day you have to be able to laugh at this stuff yeah, and exactly. I can't smell anything and I can't taste anything. It's made cooking for my family hilarious. We eat out a lot because <laughs> we don't think of something like that, right? Like when you take a piece of meat out of the refrigerator to cook it, if you can't smell it, now it just, it's suspect no matter when you bought it, right. <laughs> right? So just sitting there poking it, like looking at it. You know, my daughter was making fun of me because I was like listening to a, a, a hand to God. I was listening to like a bowl of soup because I'm like, <laughs> maybe it's for men. men. <laughs> I'm like maybe I can hear it. And she's like, me out, I'm rotten. Throw me out. <laughs> yeah, because that's all about the textures. But, uh, you, it's about the when you yeah. It now it's just texture. No, no, no more uh, taste or smell. Yeah. So that, that's 
for me, for me, it's been a lot of recovery potato chips because I can taste salt. Oh, so I can taste very salty and I can taste very sweet. And then outside of that, you know, um, it's it, like I said, it's still lingering. This is something that like, you know, going back to the, if you want to say the 18th and where is it April 1st? April, April 2nd, April 2nd today. I still can't smell anything. I'm like smelly right now. I don't know. You're not here with me. You can't even tell me if I smell. <laughs> I might be smelly. I don't know. Now, when you were holed up in the house in like the 17th in the beginning of this thing and you, you knew you were getting sick and you felt <clears> the symptoms, <throat> um, how, was it scary? I would imagine it, it was scary, especially when, you, when the, the kids start getting sick and every, all your friends are getting sick. Was, was there ever a moment, like, I know you're a strong person, but was there a moment when you were like well for me it was scary for me what became scary um was so there come i don't i think this is most moms and probably just parents in general um when your kid is when your kid is sick and you're worried you know when you know that when or i should say when you don't know that it's a common cold or you don't know that it's you know something that they're going to recover for from you know and you're nervous then you're not sleeping right so that's when it was scary for me when i knew that i was gonna that i couldn't sleep because i kept checking on my older daughter who was sick and kept checking on my younger one who wasn't sick yet when i'm running around with the you know the, the forehead scan thermometer just checking checking uh temperatures all night yeah. and making sure that nobody's fever is spiking but knowing that now i'm not getting rest you know if i fall apart single parent so if i fall apart the whole house is falling apart. It's over. So that, that to me is what was scary is also knowing that nobody, I mean, and, and this is not, I'm not trying to sound dramatic, but no one can come help. Right. Like right, I can't right. ask, I can't ask somebody to come and possibly become infected because I'm tired or because I'm struggling. If I'm breathing and I'm just, you know, and I'm just having a rough run because I'm sick, I can't have someone come and help me. I can't have somebody come and grab my little one you know, so that I can rest. And that's right. what was scary to me was what happens, you know, if this does go, if this goes bad for me, what happens? Right. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the scariest thing for everyone, whether they're, they have any symptoms or whether they don't is, is what happened. Like nobody knows if you're going to get through it and have a shitty 10, 12, 15 days, or, you know, are you going to, have pneumonia in three days are you good for, is one going to be able to come help you if somebody does come help you are you now getting them sick you know right. that's what was scary to me is what you know is not knowing what was going to happen and until everybody I mean I probably went a good four days and in four days I probably got a sum total of eight hours of sleep right yeah that's right yeah between not feeling well myself and not wanting to you know god forbid not know that my kids fever is spiking right yeah exactly so that's a lot of, lot of pressure, a lot of stress. You, you're worrying about yourself. You're worrying about your family. Um, yeah, it's, it's not a fun, but, but now everyone, you, you're on the, the up, you're getting better. And I imagine the kids are getting better too. So everyone's kind of recovering at the same time over there. Mm -hmm. Yes. My little one, mercifully, um, I, I mean, I, I've read over and over again that kids seem to be like young kids seem to be really uh, recovering fastest or having the least amount of symptoms. She had a, uh, she had a, a cough for a few days. And then after that, essentially nothing never slowed her down. Oh, that's good. My <laughs> older daughter. Yeah. It, yeah. It was good for her. It wasn't good for me. <laughs> While yeah, I was exactly, sick and my yeah. older daughter was sick. <laughs> yeah. And there was just, there's just a feral five-year-old running through the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um. Yeah, so she she really got through it very well. My older daughter, she we you know she was feeling exhausted. I think for, just from the fever, just yeah. from you know she really she had a fever every day for seven days, and that that's a lot. That takes its toll. Yeah, for sure. That takes its toll, and it's it's very exhausting. I would say, what I've heard from most people who've gotten sick and recovered, and myself included, is that you're exhausted. Yeah. And um, and I think. And I, again, I'm not a medical professional at all, but it seems like people who even have long, longer symptoms, if you're not spiking these 103, 104 fevers, it looks like you're, you know, going to be all right. And mercifully, like I said, we had anywhere from 99 to, you know, 102 in my right. house.
that's that's what we went through wow. and body aches body aches were rough i i i kept reading that you should stay hydrated and we did it was a lot of liquids a lot of liquids a lot of hot liquids a lot of soup tea soup tea you know now that i'm in the end stages i you know graduating to uh, moscow mules that i really uh, <laughs> recommend for everyone i have a lime i use the fresh ginger Nice. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very good. And uh, you know the medicinal Tito's. Hey, all right. It's party time. <laughs> and uh, you know a little ginger beer. Nice. And then because I've been sick, I like to throw in a quick shot of the lemon ginger echinacea. You, you know, and it's really just a restorative tonic, is what I call it. There you go. <laughs> Everyone can have one of those. <laughs> That's good stuff. So everybody have one of those. <laughs> now um, you've been out of the house since you've been recovering, or are you still kind of staying quarantined? Or, or uh, well, um, I did have to take my daughter to the doctor, and I did have to go to the doctor myself. And we've been to CVS to pick up prescriptions. Right. right. Um, but we are, for the most part, avoiding everyone. Um, yes. And you know, for again, I have not received a, a definitive positive result. Right, from right. what my doctor said and what my daughter's pediatrician said, um, they are pretty certain that we had the coronavirus, especially because we still we still can't smell or taste anything. Right, and that yeah. seems to be that seems to be the definitive symptom. Is right. uh, and 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 I've read that it can go on for weeks, so this should be a hilarious few weeks of not being able to smell or taste anything. <laughs> but. Uh, now, um, what do you say? Now that you've lived through this, and, and thank God Mike Keegan and, and Tim uh, are sorry. feeling better too, right? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Well, Tim is, Tim is the latest victim um, <laughs> of the coronavirus, and he's, he's, uh, he's about two days in at this oh, point. Oh, wow. Okay. But Mike is getting better, Mike Keegan. Um, you know, he, he actually got sicker faster. Right. Um, and then we both, I had been sick longer, but we both ended up in urgent care on the same day. Wow. Wow. Did you go together or did you? No, we didn't. No, no. Right. He went on his own and I went on my own. Wow. Well, God bless you. I'm glad that both of you are feeling better. And what do you say now living through this, having your boyfriend's gone through this, one of your closest friends, your family, your children, what do you say to people that aren't taking it seriously and, and, and not taking precautions or, or, you know, not doing the coronavirus challenges and all that kind of right. stuff? Well, you know, like I, I, I did, you know, have a small friend with you know, a comedian um, who, who was telling, you know, it, it's so irresponsible. If you have any kind of a platform to speak to people and, you know, as a comedian, as an entertainer, as, you know, like as a, a, a personality, you know, you host, you, you host Pasusu, right. you know, we're, <laughs> we're on Governor's Radio. It's so irresponsible to speak from ignorance. And none of us are medical professionals, not a single one. Not me, not you, not Cat Rescue Comic. Like none of these people are medical professionals. So if medical professionals are saying this quarantine is necessary, this you know, stay at home is necessary, social distancing is necessary, for you to start posting on social media and saying that this is a hoax or it's a scam or it's unnecessary, it's it's so dangerous. And if you endanger one person because of your, you know, ignorance and hubris, then you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. And for me, I took it, you know, I've seen people posting things and I really had, had to get to the point where I just, you know, shut it down because it's not, it's not fair to other people. You know, there's always going to be one dingbat who listens to the dumbest of us all, right, right. you know, and if that person goes through and gets infected and infects their grandmother or infects, you know, their neighbor or sneezes on something at, you know, Trader Joe's because they're not being careful because, you know, oh, I saw a blah, blah, blah person on Facebook say that it was a hoax and it was stupid and we should all just get back to work. Right. Like, right. is that what you, is that, could you live with that? I couldn't live with that. I no. can't live with, you know, like if I'm not a medical professional, so I look to the medical professionals, if the nurses and the doctors and the surgeon general, and, you know, I'm not, I, I might have been pretty clear about, but if he, both sides of if both the conservatives and the liberals in power are saying, stay home, stay home.
what is it? What difference is it going to make? What difference is it going to make in your life? Right. Your yeah. home, you're safe at home. It's, I, I think it's so important, you know, also to phrase it that way. You know, when stuck at home, you're safe at home. And right. what a blessing to be able to be safe at home. True indeed. You know? Yeah. And if you're healthy, take it seriously. And if you're not healthy, take it more seriously. Because you don't, because I don't even know what's out there. I, you know, I went through it. I went to urgent care, um, just a regular North well urgent care and they were wonderful, but I don't know. I don't even know what, what's going on in the hospital. I don't know what would have happened if I had to go to a hospital, would they have been able to, to help me? Would there have been a ventilator available for me Would like, I don't know. Right. Yeah. You know, and I'm in Nassau. This is a very populated area. It's not New York City, but you know, it's not the middle of Nebraska either. You know, right, yeah. we, we have we're densely populated. This is New York. We are densely populated. You know, be safe. I would rather be safe than be sorry. You know what? Money will be there. We can make money. In 30 days, we will still be able to make money. In third, our our you know, and I'm a huge I'm a huge critic of our government, but our government is actually coming through for us right now. So stay the fuck home, stay the fuck home. Don't, don't preach ignorance. If you don't know, just shut up, just shut up and toe the line because it's better to be safe than sorry. I agree. I think that uh, in, in this time we, you know, we're seeing it. Uh, the whole world is shut down. Um, it's not just a, a town or a state, it's the whole world. And we're seeing it, our friends are, are getting sick like you. Um, and uh, my family and everyone. So it's it's out there. It's happening, and I think people need to. Everyone needs to be responsible. And take precautions. Um, and like you said, no matter what political affiliations you are or aren't, you really need to uh, just you know stay home. Um, but um, but for me, as you can see, like I'm I'm in need of a barber to open up so I can get a haircut. But look at uh, my nails. <laughs> <laughs> so those should be uh, essential jobs. <laughs> yeah, my Look at my hair. <laughs> Look at mine. <laughs> I'm like the worst. But um, but yeah. So uh, but anyway, Carl, I'm really happy to see you better. Uh, and and you look great, and you sound Thank great. You. And I don't think you've coughed once in the entire interview. So that's that's. A I'm good telling thing. you, it's yeah. Carla's medicinal tonic. You see great. the C. It's, I'm not even joking. I put fresh ginger in there. I put fresh key limes in there. I nice. got the real deal ginger beer. And I'm not joking. I did put a shot of the echinacea ginger lemon juice in here. <laughs> awesome. Good. That's a, that, that could be the secret ingredient to protect us all. <laughs> Carla's Moscow Mules. <laughs> there you go. We got to put the recipe in, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> in the interview. You know, yeah. it's funny because uh, you know, I bought when I did when I did go to trade. I've had friends. Uh, you know, I've had friends that stop drop off stuff to me because I couldn't go out and I was sick. Um, Jeff Bossy dropped stuff off for me. He's uh, wonderful. Yes. And I've had a lot of people call me and ask me if I needed anything. And you know, this was and it, this was not. It was not to make Moscow mules. That's just an added benefit. But it was one of the things that I asked for was ginger beer. I was right. like, that has ginger in it. I'm gonna pass it off to my kids as soda. I'm going to put the ginger echinacea in there. I need fresh ginger. You know, uh, there are a lot of things that, I, you know, I don't know if people are able to get, you know, antibiotics. People are saying like, you know, azithromycin is helping, but not everyone can get that. Not every doctor is willing to prescribe that to their patient's sight unseen. Ginger, lemon, vitamin C, teas, broths, staying hydrated, you know, taking zinc, just doing all, these are things that are, they're not going to hurt you. Right. So if they do nothing, if they do nothing at all, they're also not ever going to be a detriment to your health. Right. Exactly. Right. Yep. So, you know, take the vitamin C, take the zinc, take the, you know, the elderberry, uh, you know, we have the elderberry gummies. I know a lot of people are saying to drink apple cider vinegar, all the stuff that all of the uh, Trader Joe's going crunchy organic people have been doing, <laughs> just do it. It can't hurt. It can't hurt. I mean, and if nothing else, you know what? A healthy immune system is going to recover faster than a compromised immune system. Yes, indeed. Very well said. You, you are an amazing woman, uh, Carla Okerson. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Today. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this will run on Saturday night. So make sure you tune in. 
and I uh, hope you keep recovering, keep feeling better. And I yeah, I'll text you my recipe. I'll yeah, text, text the recipe. recipe. We'll definitely Car put the recipe Carlos in the restorative comments. restorative tonic. <laughs> yes, that'd be awesome. And uh, for the get, twenty for twenty one and over for the for the twenty one and over who aren't feeling their best. <laughs> <laughs> There's your slogan. <laughs> Good stuff, uh, Carly. You, you you rock. And I can't wait until we get past all this and uh, you guys get back on stage again and we could uh, and also get you on the show and you can start judging some comedians. Don, I didn't get to ask you. Everybody's good in your house? No symptoms? No nothing? Thank God. I'm knocking on wood. Yes, so far so good. We've been, um, you know, pretty much, we're all the way out here in Manorville, like right next to Riverhead. So we're kind of mm -hmm. out in the boonies. Mm -hmm. um, not that that matters really, but um, just staying away, working from home. You know, just avoiding uh, uh, all the, you know, crowds as best as we can. So, so far, so good. But, you know, you never know. We're still waiting it out. This thing still hasn't peaked yet. That's what's scary. Yeah. yeah. So, so ultimately, I think that that is when, when, when I hear people talking about avoiding crowds and social distancing, the reason why I think that that is, you know, really ultimately going to be the answer for everyone is because I'm fairly certain that I in the beginning of March and you know or end of February how whenever I I don't think I was being careful enough on the subway right yeah, you know? yeah I'm in the city for work I take the subway I was washing my hands you know like I always do but probably just not enough and I and I know at least for myself I habitually touch my face a lot I have allergies my nose is always itchy so that's what that's how I think I ultimately ended up in contact. I don't think there were also people um, there were also people in courthouses that I work in that tested positive. But again, this is something where I'm handing off papers, I'm borrowing someone's pen, I'm you know yeah, I'm pushing yeah. an elevator button, a door handle, and I'm just not thinking. You know, maybe I just washed my hands, and now I'm going to go and get in the car. I'm going to go and get on the subway, and and that that's just being around people. If you're home and you don't have any symptoms you're not going to get sick. You simply won't because there's no one else around. You're right, not going to get right. it from anywhere, you know, unless you, you know, you go do the weird, the coronavirus challenge of people licking toilet bowls. Yeah, that's ridiculous. But it, it's terrifying. Just general, in general, why would you want to do that? I mean, you're just going to get all sorts of other things outside of coronavirus. <laughs> it's just so nasty. Yeah, you're just, you're going to get herpes and, you know, crabs. Can you get mouth crabs? <laughs> you probably can. I, I was watching some of it for this show. I have a, a whole piece about how the millennials are the dumbest human beings to walk the earth. But um, watching video of them licking the toilet seats is so disgusting. <laughs> it's like probably one of the most grossest things I've ever watched in my life. Like, they, they go on right public I bathrooms. <laughs> I don't think I could leave like a clean, brand new, out of the box in Home Depot toilet seat. I don't yeah. think I can bring myself to do no, it. No, it's it's just disgusting. And like this one kid, he just walks into like a restroom in in the public like place. I don't even know where he was. He's a public restroom, and he just walks in, sees the toilet, lifts the seat, and just and licks it. Like just starts licking like under the seat, like that. <laughs> it's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <I> would, uh, <laughs> yeah that's what I, that was my same reaction <laughs> i would die it was so disgusting it's in the it's gonna be in the show so if you want to watch it it's i don't know when it's gonna run if it's gonna be before or after this so but i don't millennials right aren't the millennials like up in arms saying that that's not them that's gen gen z that does the that that eats the Tide Pods and and, and licks the toilet seats oh, and, yeah. and does all this dumb shit. Oh, the millennials are separating themselves from. Yeah, that the millennials there. are like, that's not ours. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the Gen Z are uh, just a weird bunch of uh, people. Uh, it, we we've devolving. We're not evolving. <laughs> We're devolving. Well, right. Well, if you think about it, so like, so my my daughter is in this position. You know, these are people who are born essentially around the time of 9-11 yeah, yeah you know and they they've seen hurricane katrina they've seen you know uh hurricane sandy where we're from right 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 like yeah. we are we lost our home our home was you know was leveled oh, I'm, wow. I'm in freeport i'm all the way south in freeport so you know not that my daughter's licking toilet bowls at least i don't think so <laughs> not in front of me anyway yeah, but right. you know th this is also a generation that has grown up on camera 
right? Yeah, you grew up yeah. on camera. What, when, when you and I were younger, anything dumb that we did, was it maybe, maybe it was recorded by someone's, you know, disposable camera if they were carrying one. Right, and right. it was like, you know, there's film somewhere. Now, you know, you do something dumb, everyone's recording. There's a snap, everyone's on Snapchat, everyone's on Instagram, everyone's taking pictures, everyone's taking video, and it's there forever. Yeah. Right? So this, it's a whole different mindset. No one else has ever, not millennials, no one else has grown up like this. So you know what? That's a lot of stress to be under. That's a lot of pressure to be under. And, you know, maybe you just got to lick a toilet bowl sometimes just to <laughs> release the pressure. Just to feel alive. <laughs> <laughs> just, to feel, just to feel alive, you got to eat a Tide Pod and <laughs> lick a toilet bowl. Yeah. And, oh. <laughs> just to try to stand out and get, and they get like, you know, 20 likes. So then they're doing it all for the likes. Do you know yeah. how many likes I would need to lick a toilet bowl? I mean, like, oh, I would need. I I need to like surpass Justin Bieber and <laughs> yeah. Meghan Markle and you know all the little Yorkies of Instagram, all of them. I <laughs> and I still don't think I could do it. I don't know if I, I could. Still ever... don't think I could do it. Yeah. Uh, maybe not likes, maybe dollars. Yeah, <laughs> maybe a lot of dollars because then I could you know disinfect my mouth, get some antibiotics, <laughs> some therapy, all of that. Yeah, it would take a lot for me too. Like again, if I saw this actual suitcase full of money, maybe I would do it. But um, it, that just it just <laughs> gross, man. Uh, but hey, those kids. Uh, oh, and that kid who licked the toilet seat ended up getting coronavirus too. So he wins the challenge. And probably <laughs> and syphilis. Yeah. And <laughs> gonorrhea of the mouth, <laughs> strep, and E. coli. <laughs> diabetes i don't know <laughs> what the hell lives on the toilet bowl everything uh, everything oh. it was like a public one i mean geez but uh, oh my god i you know what i fina like i'm insane about cleaning my toilet bowl like i have like the drop-ins and then i have like the little like gel that you put on the side just, i wouldn't like my own toilet bowl yeah. and my own <laughs> ass goes there. that's my butt my butt i know where my butt has been and i still wouldn't like my own yeah. toilet bowl i still wouldn't yes i'm with you on that uh it, it'll take a, a billion like a couple million dollars and and maybe a, a ton of likes on instagram for me to do it i mean look i'm not saying i'm saying i wouldn't like my own toilet bowl but i mean if there's money involved i certainly have a price <laughs> there you go you know like none of us are working right now so if somebody you know has the money i'll you know just hit me up on instagram or you know <laughs> facebook all my information's out there just shoot me a dm shoot me a venmo and we can make this work um also available pictures of my feet whatever you guys need i'm here for you my hey, <laughs> there you go and you can make everyone be a famous carla brew yes well. Yes, Car Carla's restorative tonic. Doesn't that you sound know, so? Doesn't it sound healthy? It sounds official. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> restorative if, tonic. Are you Don? Are you feeling a little under the weather? Let me make you some of Carla's famous restorative tonic. <laughs> <laughs> sounds. It sounds great. <laughs> it sounds so good, doesn't yeah, it? It does. It sounds terrible. I'd be like, I would love some. That'd be great. But doesn't it sound like there's wheatgrass involved and yeah. you know, maybe some like bee propolis or. You know, <laughs> some kale juice. Yeah, like a, yeah. It sounds like it'll be like warm and tasty, and yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> there you go. A little Tito's never hurt nobody. <laughs> yeah, a little Tito's extra distilled, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Carla, you're awesome. I appreciate you taking the time. All the best to you and yours, and uh, keep on with the recovery and. Um, we will see you soon, and and I definitely definitely leave the recipe for the Carla's uh, recovery tonic, and I want to I want to try to make some. <laughs> I might make some tonight. All right, Don. It's so good seeing you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Same here. All right. Good night. Good night.